film number six in this series of films on uh, industrial communication uh, is the, also the final film. It's the RFID film. Uh, and RFID is really not industrial data communication in a common, common sense. Uh, there is no field buses and such involved, but it's really the trend on where we're going forward in industrial communication. Uh, RFID is radio frequency identification and it's uh, object uh, identification by electromagnetic field. And you see here, for example, this is a grain of rice compared to a small device that's able that is able to uh, communicate via RFID. And you also see that this is in the palm of someone's hand. RFID basics, uh, you have tags which are glued to or attached to uh, different uh, objects. For example, you may have this kind of tag, which you will find in uh, the air of kettle, cows and sheep. Uh, you may also have uh, in a storage facility uh, tags on different parcels and also in a mailing system and even in, in trucks. So you can uh, have um, devices inside a truck that can be detected. Then you have something called readers and readers is, uh, for example, this one, the one that reads the data from the tags. And this can, for example, be embedded in a gate. So when you go through the gate, uh, the tag will be read. And it can be, for example, uh, on a shelf or in a, in a handheld device. Uh, these communicate with a computer uh, where you have local software for example, uh, telling if uh, what kind of the equipment it is and so on. And again, the server may communicate with a larger enterprise database. So for example, if you have a parcel, you mark it with a tag. At every station, the parcel goes through from the, uh, from the sender to the final destination. It's read by a reader. Data is... Um, is handled by a local computer but sent onto a sky uh, based um, server and uh, a cloud server and uh, data is uh, stored there accessible for everyone uh, along the line how does it work uh, the tags are attached to objects like this uh, an antenna on the reader sends uh, radio frequency power uh, and the power is often enough to activate the tag. So the tag itself doesn't have any uh, power, a battery or so on. It's simply powered by the, by the power from the antenna. And it echoes back uh, its ID plus maybe some additional data. The reader, the same antenna here, captures the data and sends it to the computer and the computer use the data for um, for whatever it's, it's supposed to be used for. The tag, every tag has memory. Some only have ROM, which is read only memory. So they cannot store additional data. It's simply its unique ID, for example. So if I have, for example, in uh, um, uh, in a shop, every object in a shop is maybe marked with maybe marked with an ID tag, and the database will hold if the if the object is pay, paid for or not. So once I pay for for something, maybe a pair of trousers or whatever. So if I pay for a pair of trousers, the database will register that it's paid for. When I take that tag through an alarm system, it's read and uh, compared to the data inside the computer, if it's paid for, no alarm will sound, but if it's not paid for, an alarm will sound. So that's simply based on uh, the, the tag giving away its unique ID, ID when it's activated. 
um, but you, it may also have RAM, which is associated with associated with an intelligence. So, for example, a tag can perform data logging when it's, uh, uh, for example, on a parcel. Uh, it may store the temperature that it expires on its way, uh, how many G forces it uh, absorbs on uh, observes on the way, if there's high humidity check-ins where it's been along its way so you can see where which route it took from the sender to the receiver um, it highlights it doesn't necessarily have to be within the line of sight compared to a barcode it can be read uh, from outside so for example here in a dog's neck it can be read through the skin of the dog a barcode uh, will uh, you will have to see the barcode in order to read it uh, and um, businesses associated with RFID some make tags and readers some program the software some have special labels security and so on and there's also a standard ISO 18000 IOT the Internet of Things, which is a word that everyone talks about at the moment, uh, it's where you have that uh, the physical environment around us uh, start communicating with each other. So, for example, uh, my car can communicate with uh, with uh, the, the garage uh, without me having to know that it communicates uh and then maybe uh, i will get a message that my car is due for service and i will get that directly from from uh, from the service site uh and rfid is often regarded as a must for internet of things uh, obviously uh, that in order to have a full internet of things you must be able to read the information from the different objects that are connected to IoT. How many uh, IoT devices do we have? Uh, well, it started back in 2015 and it grows and grows and grows and grows. And 2021, where we are now, about 11.6 billion devices connected to IoT and it will grow and grow. Uh, what uh, do we have? We have, for example, 5G, which is coming more and more now. We have old blue ones, uh, cell phone based, wire based, uh, wireless LANs uh, here, uh, wireless uh, PANs, personal area networks. And uh, you see, they all grow. Uh, but I guess the wired one is the one that doesn't grow very much.